And as we set the stage for our last and final presentation, if you're just tuning in today, you're in the growth in commerce stage here at, Com at Depth Commerce Day. My name is Diana Gordon. I'm the SVP of e-commerce and marketplace strategy here at 3Q Depth. And next up with me, I'd like to welcome our next and our last speaker at the growth commerce stage, my very own colleague, Allie, who's a managing director at Byte uh, Depth in London. And she's going to talk to us all about accelerating e-commerce through personalization. Allie, the floor is yours. Amazing. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks so much for your, your time. Um, I'm, am I okay to share my screen, Dana? Uh, yeah, I think so. If, that, if you had a presentation, go ahead and do that. Yeah, I do. Yep, we can see it. Great. Amazing. That's what you want to hear when you first share your presentation, right? So thanks for saying it. <laughs> so yeah. Hi, I'm Ali McClintock. I'm Managing Director of uh, the Marketing Technology Team out in the UK. And I'm going to talk to you about a um, an instance or a case study where we essentially built a global solution to a local problem that one of our clients had. And I absolutely love the work. So thank you for the opportunity to share it. Um, and really what underpins all of that is driving e-commerce, so driving results for the brand, but through personalization. Um, but before we can get to the solution and everything that we did, um, uh, it, we need to kind of focus on the problem first. Um, and it was a good problem to have. So um, just eat takeaway, uh, I think a majority of you will know, but they are world leaders in delivering joy through food. So they have a great job because they deliver um, an incredible array of delicious meals across the globe um, and really that that's what they're wholly focused on how can we deliver joy and they deliver joy through over a hundred cuisines so everything from your traditional takeaway uh, pizza or burgers but also now moving into new categories like grocery um, and um, desserts and even in London now you can get a coffee delivered to you in about 15 minutes um, so it's a huge growth, growth area um, but there's a huge amount of like diversity in terms of what what Just Eat can deliver through through food. And it also delivers it like truly globally. Um, so over, it's active in over 20 countries. So from Spain, France, the States to Australia and New Zealand. When we talk about being global with Just Eat Takeaway, we really mean global. So we need to make sure that something, or whatever we're doing works in Italy as well as it works in the UK or, or Canada. And then if you think about all of those different cuisines and all of the different countries, you end up with, I we couldn't find an actual number, which I think said something, um, thousands, hundreds of thousands of restaurant partners. So um, everything from your big restaurant groups like McDonald's uh, and Domino's to your favorite pizza restaurant down the road, which you've been going to for 10 years, um, just eat delivers th from food from thousands of restaurant partners. Um, and that's not a bad problem to have, right? Having that supply, having that diversity of like what we can deliver and doing it at a global global scale isn't a bad problem to have, but it is, it does come with its a, a fair amount of challenges um, for a brand uh, to be able to communicate all of those things. And those challenges are kind of fourfold. The first is um, that you, if you don't have a solution at a local level, what happens is that you end up having to rely on restaurants with really high distribution. Um, so uh, if you're having to do something in Italy and Spain and the UK, and you're not going, you're not, you're not able to do that at a local level, you end up having to say, okay, which restaurants deliver in Italy and Spain and the UK and only focusing on them, which actually doesn't, doesn't articulate the supply in which that, that we actually have on the platform. So, so that's a risk. You also risk being inconsistent if you take a different tact and actually uh, brief it out into all of your local teams because you risk being inconsistent. So you risk your tone of voice and your brand attributes and, and the way that you look and the way that you feel to consumers being inconsistent in different markets. So how can you drive consistency essentially? 
And you also risk um, showing way too many options. So I don't know about you guys, but that we have kind of the paradox of choice nowadays, where if you open an app to a retailer, you get 5,000 different dresses that you can buy. Uh, if you open the app to, to uh, on Just Eat Takeaway, like there is so much choice, right? There's so much choice. Uh, whatever mood you're in, uh, we can deliver it. But actually, we as brands have kind of an opportunity to take it one step further and say, I think I know what you would like from my 5,000 different restaurants. And, and here's a bit more personalization. Here's a bit more of getting you to actually what you want. So if you don't do that, then you risk essentially showing too many options and actually putting people off and, and driving that paradox of choice and, and potentially losing consumers at that stage in the journey. You also risk not being able to like actually think about your different markets and their nuances. Um, so I, I know that probably lots of people in the audience uh, work on global accounts and, and you'll know that the challenges in particular markets are different to the challenges in other markets. So um, the UK, for example, the online takeaway uh, uh, category is incredibly advanced, right? We have a huge amount of um, a huge amount of different brands doing it. I can get my coffee delivered from Pret in 15 minutes. Um, in Germany, it's quite different. Actually, the biggest competitor in Germany is the leaflet, which is on people's fridges because people still call up their local restaurants and they don't use delivery apps. And actually, if we're not able to... Uh, cluster markets and talk to them differently we risk being kind of a panacea that isn't able to actually articulate what we do in our point of difference and our value proposition in the different markets and really all of that is laddering into the risk of being inefficient which i think everyone on this if, if you're at a social commerce day you care about driving d d um, return on on investment and actually all of those things so being inefficient they all mean that you you become inefficient so Essentially, Just Eat Takeaway had this brilliant problem to have, right? Because they have amazing supply and they do an amazing job of delivering joy through food. Um, but they didn't have a way of doing that at a local level or a personalized level, which, uh, which had its risks. So that's where we came in and we really spent some time thinking about solutions to that problem. Um, and that led us to... Um, the the goal the ultimate goal which is to show the right restaurants in the right place at the right time so who are you where are you and what would you like to see and to do that really effectively we needed to do, we needed to bring together creative content paid media data and technology which is kind of quite hard to do but has it is really impactful once you get it once you get it up and running and we call it Project Sunday. So we launched this about a year ago now. It's been live for over a year. Um, and it is the kind of the solution to that problem. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been really like instrumental in, in driving the results, which we've had over with Just Eat over the past year. And ultimately what it does is it takes all of those pieces of information that I've talked about in the last kind of 10 minutes to... Um, build tailored creative assets at scale um so personalized assets at scale and it takes lots of things into account and we called it project sunday because it's almost like one of those sundays you have the chocolate sprinkles and the cherry and everything on top so you have your cluster so which market are you in what's the what's the priority for that market You've got the final stage are we driving consideration or are we driving purchase right now consumer mindset is it a Tuesday evening or is it a Sunday morning? Because what you want on those, those times is very different, right? And then what brand attribute do we want to surface? What's going to set us apart in that particular person? Um, and, and ultimately the desired consumer behavior and brings all of that together into a, cre a, a tailored creative asset. Um, that look a bit like this because uh, this isn't particularly creatively um, outgoing because you actually can do that and actually build a, an asset which looks really brilliant and drives that brand affinity as well. Um, so that it looks a little bit like this and I'll break it down because I think it's quite interesting to see how this asset is made and all of the different things which go into it. So here's how it's done. Um, so ultimately, we have lots of different kind of uh, data data sets, which we we pull together to, to create the different tailored assets. Um, we start at, at a city level um, because that's really important for, for a brand like Just Eat Takeaway, because what we're delivering um, is is it really based on where you're based geographically. So your location. So we start at a city level. 
And then we think about consumer mindsets. Then we think about the, the solution to your consumer mindset based on what city you're in. Um, and then your reason to believe. So, so why would you order? And then a call to action. So what that might look like in more detail is like, Dublin, Cork, Galway, um, are you looking for lunch inspiration or are you looking for a hangover cure? Uh, or actually, are you planning a big night in that you want to prepare for? Well, pizza is the answer. All in one place, all your favourites in one place, see your menu. So again, digging into that a bit more, in a bit more detail, what that might do is allow you to kind of automate, like automate templates and build those assets. So looking for a cure cork, it's time for faux, all your favorites in one place, see our menu. Um, and this is what it looks like. So need a hangover fixed cork, time for a faux, all your favorites in one place, and then pulling in the uh, dynamic logos of the top restaurants in that particular area as well, because although we can get really personalized and we can maybe allude to the fact that you might want some lunchtime inspiration, we also want to make sure that we're showing you all of the other supply which we have in the area because we can't we can't read people's minds, unfortunately. Um, so so bringing that all together into these like particularly personalized assets. And it's worth saying that this is one of thousands of assets. Um, and so um, it, it was, it's been really effective in, in bringing that personalization and that scale on an automated um, sense. And it's also solved lots of problems for, for Just Eat Takeaway, which I found like really exciting. The, the first problem that it solved is, is the city problem, which is that um, city, we, we see that city-based messaging performs really well. So if we're able to call out where you are geographically, it performs really well. Um, and that is particularly important when in new regions or markets where people where we're introducing ourselves um, because they might not have heard about us. And if we're able to pull out particular ge geographies, then that has a really big impact on the performance of the campaigns. Um, but it also enables us not only to pull out London or um, or Cork, but it also allows us to pull in the the logos of the of the restaurants in that area which people like. So it it helps it it solves the problem of cities. So rather than having to create a bespoke campaign every time we launch any new city, which is pretty much impossible and takes a huge amount of time, this kind of ticks that box for Just Eat Takeaway. It also helps us um, surface the, the, we call them big restaurant groups. So the key strategic partners that Just Eat has, so the Subways or the McDonald's of the world, because they um, they, they want to make sure that they're kind of being surfaced through, through our advertising. So it helps us uh, build campaigns for those key suppliers um, and surface that the appropriate branding that gets signed off by them and make, they make sure that they're happy with it also the food imagery. So it enables us to actually support those key strategic partnerships, again, in a way that we don't need to create a brand new campaign every time uh, we have a new strategic partner, for example. It also helps us like surface um, the big sponsorships that we have. Um, so um, Just Eat Takeaway are lucky enough to sponsor some of the big football matches, so soccer, depending on where you're, you are in the world, um, the big football matches. So uh, Project Sunday enables us to essentially make sure that we're front of mind whenever kickoff, be before kickoff. So we can actually build bespoke assets depending on which games are coming up, who which teams are playing. So enable it, essentially being personalized and, and leveraging the sponsorships that we have, not only in the big brand campaigns and the idents on TV, but we're like having that through the funnel, which is which is really impactful. And finally, like many more, and we'll go on and talk very, very quickly about um, the results, which have been re really brilliant and, and it's kind of a consistent outperformer. But one of the other things which has been like really impactful is that we're able to kind of mop up lots of individual campaigns into something like Project Sunday and what that means for us as, as a partner of Just Eat but what it also means for the Just Eat team is that they can spend more time on things on the real big brand camp pieces or or the things which are pushing them on even further because the campaigns which we know how to do we've done lots of times before can get absorbed into Project Sunday which is saving everybody time and energy um, so, so it, it's kind of offering us really a scalable solution to all of the different messages that a brand like Just Eat Takeaway needs to say in their 20 markets, in their different cities. 
but that's all wonderful and it sounds great and you can tie it up in a bow but if it doesn't work then um then it's it it, it doesn't work and, and we shouldn't be doing it luckily it, it has worked and it's worked on a number of different levels so the, the first thing to note is that it's a lot cheaper to create assets. So when you compare creating one of these uh, personalized ads, um, compare it to manual asset production, we're about 400% cheaper, which is significant, right? Um, and, and all of that money can be um, funneled into other things which are having an impact on your brand. So enabling you to be, be more effective with your spend. It also saves lots of time. Um, so uh, if you think about um, uh, campaigns from like briefing all the way through to actually getting it live, that can take weeks and months, right? Whereas actually we're able to do, do camp turnaround campaigns in, in minutes and hours with Project Sunday. So we can move quickly, automate production at scale, deliver at a, a scalable solution um, it, it, to even to new problems which are coming in. And on that piece on scale, like the to think about delivering um, personalized assets, so thousands of personalized assets in 34 cities, 17 different markets, different languages, different cultural nuances, to be able to do that manually, it, it just wouldn't be feasible. Um, so what this allows us is kind of that unparalleled scale to be able to deliver that personalization. And then finally, and probably most importantly, it's driving orders. Um, so uh, I can't share the exact details, but when you look at our benchmarks um, and also other live activity at any given time, it consistently outperforms. So we know that personalization works. We know the closer we can get to what you want right now, the, the more effective our campaigns are going to be. And we've definitely seen that in, in, in Project Sunday. So that was kind of a very quick whistle-stop tour of, um, of Project Sunday and the work that we've done with Just Eat Takeaway. But really it's that scale, that efficiency and that effectiveness bringing like personalization to the fore um, and allowing us to do like some really exciting stuff with Just Eat Takeaway. So hopefully it was useful. Um, I, I'm joined by Flo, um, who's who's been the senior lead to, uh, tech planner uh, on this project. So that if there are any like really scary technical questions, I can um, say, Flo, can you answer that? But yeah, here for any questions you might have, or even if you uh, uh, we want to prompt a discussion. But hopefully that was useful. Ellie, thank you so much. Yep, we can open the floor now to questions. You can either add them in the chat box, or you can just 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 shout them out over over the the web chat. Hi, Flo. I I have one for for Ali and Flo. Um, first, this is your presentation is making me hungry, so thank you for this. Um, it's great to see all the personalization and know that it it's driving orders. How is uh, how is the client using the data coming from the personalization to sort of go back in and refuel sort of their partnership strategy? Are they using that to determine? new chains and new outlets to partner with or are they trimming some of you know that paradox of choice down as a result of of that data that you're collecting yeah I, there's um you end up having lots of data right uh to work with um and i think Ultimately, what we found, and, and maybe play jump in, but ultimately what we found is that everybody is different and actually I might want a salad one day and I might, might want a really like big burger the next day. So so the what we can offer as Just Eat is the, um, is the ability to like order whatever you fancy on any given day uh, and, and provide that scale. What Project Sunday does really nicely is take you that take you one step further into knowing what that might be. Um, and even that's just saying, you know, your favorite restaurant that you usually go out to dinner with, we can, you can actually have that ordered in. Um, so those kind of things. Um, and then I think it's constantly iterated. Um, so the great thing again, with a scalable automated solution is like, you can constantly tweak it, constantly change it. Um, I'm not sure how many people were on this, the CNA call just before this, but they talked about like having that evolving strategy and never quite being done. I think that's the same with uh, Project Sunday. And I think Flo would probably agree. Like it's it's never done. We're constantly trying to find ways of tweaking it and making it better, learning from what's happened before and making it more scalable. And um, so, yeah, I think that's the, the main way we're, we're, using, we're using the data. 
I think that's one of one of the continuous themes that we've heard throughout our 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 room today is sort of this this need to be iterative and routinely testing and learning and evolving. So thank you so much, Ali and Flo, for, for sharing with us. Do we have any questions from the audience? If not, um, I think, you know, it's time to wrap up our day here. So it's been really great to hear from our experts and growth in commerce. I'd like to thank all of our guests for sharing their wisdom and I hope that you're able to take away some key learnings so that the organizations you sit in are ready for a year that will define digital futures and decide business successes. If you want to stay tuned for updates, make sure you follow Dept Agency on social media. And if you still have any questions that we haven't answered, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, my LinkedIn is in, is in the, the QR code. All our Commerce Day content will be uploaded soon and sent to you via email. That's it from us here today. Thank you and goodbye.